honestly, I think the best part of this whole thing is I do love blue in anything. I love blue dials. But Moser probably has the best range of blue dials. I mean, we, we're going to spend time talking about just blue dials, just in Moser. And there's a lot to cover. A lot Because to cover. it's not like a Rolex blue dial where they're mostly all the same or some of the other slight brands. Variants. Slight variants. There are so many variations here that we can talk about that's just awesome. And so, we are thrilled so. to be joined by Sam from HBO. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What could be better than that? What could yeah. be better? Welcome to Watchbox. Thank you. Thanks, Let's get into it. You want to start off with your pick? This is one of my favorites on the table, Swiss Alps. Um, I would love to start with Swiss Alps. And Swiss Alps, I mean, again, um, I love the shape. I love the whole concept. Um, I remember uh, being at SIHH um, when they introduced it for the first time, and everybody thought it was just kind of a little bit of a joke, but like really a great, I don't know, at the time everybody was talking about, you know, all these watches were going to take over the real watch business, and nobody wanted anything but connected People watches. People were terrified of the Apple terrified smart of watch smart wave. watches, exactly. And this was just a great, like, hey, we're going to do something that's so much cooler, and just kind of, you know, put it in their face. It's awesome. This particular version is one of my favorites, again, because it's blue, but it's this really cool blue going to black. Um, almost, I'm going to call it that vignette of Rolex. Uh, made famous so many years ago that I love that fade of color. Um, and I just think it's an awesome piece. Love shaped watches in general. That's the other thing I'm yep. big on. Um, but I just think it's an amazing piece and just a great variation of blue. And that's the other thing is, you know, we were talking about earlier how, you know, none of these blue dial watches have blue straps. And I don't think you need that. I agree. I love the contrast. I think it accentuates the dial more when it doesn't match the strap. And with this dial in particular, as it gets darker towards the edges, with that Fumé effect and the DLC case, it's it's like there's no border from dial to case. It's right. really right. It like fades a right into fluid. The case. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's why I just think this is amazing. And the best part, and again, I know we're talking about dials today, but the backside of this, yep. the fact that the movement is built to the case is just incredible to me, and I love that. It's always a pet peeve of mine when manufacturers don't do that, so, you know, it fits, kudos it's to It's the Moser. right shape, right. it's everything. It's perfect. And now this is the Funky Blue funky variation, blue exactly. right? So I love that as you move this, you see there's definitely a tone of blue. This is definitely a, a, a chillier blue, but you see every tone of Everything from everything we see here, everything from ice blue to Arctic to that midnight, and it, all all gradients in between on this. It's very cool to see. I mean, when you look, for instance, if you have if you're out in the sun, if you have just different lighting. I mean, of course, here's a special kind of lighting, but each time the watch looks different. Each dial really, um, not only is each dial really special, but I mean, it looks different in different situations as well, which I think is yeah, it's that unique personality that that the brand tries to. Um, personify. I find that does translate not only with their blue dials but with every dial. I mean I've been wearing this kind of constantly. I love right. it. But uh, every time I step outside it's just this extremely bright emerald and it's it's one of the greener of the pioneers that I've seen which I feel extremely lucky to have gotten one of the greener ones but you know just the depth of the radiance of the color is so cool and I mean really having all this in one place next to each other is it's it's so cool to compare. Now, let's see, this is, this that's, is our midnight, midnight blue. blue that we were just discussing, exactly. So that would be the darkest shade of a Fumé um, Mike, this is right up your have. alley. This is right up my alley, yes. It is very cool. I love this piece. I do like the light, one tone lighter, but this is pretty hot. And I also love the, that kind of flange mm -hmm. effect at the yep. edge. Because again, it gives you that break of color. It's almost a pie pan type deal. Yes, exactly. And, and, and it's, exactly. it's it's really cool to see that because it is. It adds not only does it add depth to the dial, yeah, but I rock this. with the, yeah, see that is so you. With the shape of it in general, it just it, it furthers the. Uh, I'm using gradient too yeah. much, but it furthers the gradient in a really cool way. Yeah, it changes the color on the outside. It's just and a I much more subtle approach compared to the f uh, funky blue, where you really have this extreme change in in dial this gradient. This one's just a much more subtle, yeah, much more classy style. And how is that part. achieved? The, the so the actually, the, to achieve this fumé, so in French it's called the smoke, it's, it's the word for smoky, so this smoky effect, it actually takes more than 200 steps. Huh. And it takes us several months to produce it. And to begin with, what happens is they, we do them in batches. 
So depending on what we need, we might do 10 or we might do 50. So each batch is automatically kind of their own, their own color. So that each batch so each one has a variation color. to it. Exactly. But what goes even, what's even crazier is that after that, so we do initial coats um, of, of applying this, uh, the, the color gradient. But each watch has to be then, or each dial um, has to be done individually afterwards, which means not only is each batch separate from one another, but each watch as well. So it really is really, really unique. It's amazing. And, you know, not to uh, keep talking about Pioneer, but again, you know, having two of the same pieces together, you can really see that there is actual difference. There is actual variance in every single one. It's Well, actually, since we're talking about green now, so it goes a bit in the other direction, but if we look if we look at these two watches, I mean, mine is an Endeavor, yours is the Pioneer, but they are both the um, cosmic green, and you can already see the difference in the difference in color. It's amazing. Big difference. One of them in color, is much yeah. darker, and I mean, they're theoretically the same color. Yeah, uh, we have other shades of green, but I mean, if we just talk about the um, the cosmic green, we see the difference between these two. Right, right, right there. And that, yeah. it, it's such a difference because I have seen Pioneers that are more similar to this. And now, in terms of the, we don't have a Midnight Blue Pioneer here, but in terms of the Midnight Blues, is there, is, would you say that the, the blue is an easier tone to achieve more consistently? No, because I would say the Midnight Blue on, um, on, the, on the Pioneer is actually a bit lighter than the Midnight Blue that you have on that Venture. But it really depends See, on so that. That's so cool. <laughs> I, I love that. I love the fact yeah. that there's variations to it and you have your own. I mean, it's just... Yeah, so when you go into a, a store and you see multiple of the, uh, versions of the same watch, um, you can really choose the one that you prefer, which is slightly different from maybe your friend that's buying, sure. buying the same watch next to you. I love that. And, you know, to kind of demonstrate, this is also funky blue, correct? Exactly. Yeah. So to demonstrate, like, the differences here, it's granted we have a, you know, wandering hours versus, uh, you know, a time, time sub seconds, but it's just insane. The wandering hours is my absolute favorite. The wandering favorite. hours is like, this is my favorite out. Moser. This is it. You know, this is my pick, and this was my first pick. I think this is just incredible. It's such a, it's such a cool complication. It's underutilized in the industry in general. Well, I'm a, I go back to the Audemars days, yeah, and I was totally. always a Star Wheel guy. Um, always loved that complication, just and it was never popular. I mean, it was, yeah. really wasn't. I mean, nobody wanted that. It was just one of those cool complications that AP did back then. Um, but now to see somebody else do it, and a much more modern interpretation yeah. of it, yeah. which I love. They didn't just copy the AP design. It's the same legible, theory, bright, but much reasonable. Bright. It's an easy daily wear too, which the Star Wheel historically was not. No, and I think this on um, this, uh, you know, the strap the on this mm -hmm. Kudu just yep. makes it. I mean, it just totally makes it um, so much less dressy um, and a cool complication. I'm like, this could be a great daily. I mean, personally, I think it should use a, an orange rubber strap, but <laughs> yeah. you know, can't win them all. Yes, everyone needs an <laughs> orange rubber strap. But I mean, the Kudu is just insanely comfortable to wear. It's so supple, you don't really have to break it in. And, and what I find is the coolest element is that it actually changes over time. I mean, so I was wearing a Venture before and you could actually see how it slowly became a more of a dark caramel color. And so, yeah, it's really cool. It's it's just like the the, the dials. It it becomes that unique unique to you. Yeah, yeah. A yeah, little I love bit, that. A little bit different from from strap to strap. Another uh, another kudo and perhaps slightly opposite end of the spectrum dial side. This is this combination has to be one of the richest that's in there. So this is Arctic blue. Exactly. Yep. Arctic blue in a rose gold case. Which blue and rose, I mean, is always an blue honor. and rose is always a win. Blue and rose always wins. The warmth of rose and the, the chilliness of this blue in particular next to each other is amazing. Paired that with a see, I'm not as I'm, I'm not the light blue guy. As much. See, so I like the darker or the fade to blue. I, I'm not. That's not my blue. This is not. It's a little light for me. This this color blue is not an only watch to me. Right. But it is a fantastic third watch or fourth watch. But do you know at what event we actually launched this or in what city we actually launched this watch? I don't. In Miami. So that, you can kind that, of see. There you go. That, that's that, Miami. That, that is sport. definitely that's Miami blue. Sport. That is. <laughs> we should call it Miami blue from now on. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a very Miami watch. The rose gold, the blue, yeah. Well, we actually have the same one in white gold as well. So there is that variant. Okay. Um, but I personally like this one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could see that the white would make it a little too... Yeah, it's too light for me. Almost a bit too cold almost. Yeah, too, too tone on tone. This is enough, uh, enough contrast, enough, just enough. And that's, you know, it doesn't, doesn't jump the shark in any way. No mm -hmm. markers, purity dial, or concept, concept excuse dial, me. Exactly. Concept yep. dial, thank you. 
Uh, yeah, this the 39 millimeter case is outrageous too, and who who can argue with a manual line dress watch? You know, ultra light end of the spectrum. Ice blue is the ice blue. Yeah. So now of these, from from the light to the dark. Yes. Levels of difficulty. Is it similar? Is it in terms of production? So production, we have different suppliers, which are only capable of actually getting the colors that we want. So just because you have one supplier who, who achieves a funky blue, it doesn't mean that he'll achieve uh, the cosmic green that we looked at before, or the Arctic, uh, the, the ice blue or the Arctic blue. Um, so it really depends on what supplier we're using. This is very cool, because this is almost like the touch of blue. Yeah. 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 I think it kind of gives way. It almost puts the rest of the watch on a pedestal, because I mean, so you have this right. kind of white, so it doesn't grab your attention as much as if you had a funky blue or something else um, in there. And it puts the rest, the tourbillon, the cylindrical tourbillon, or the... On um, display. The dial at 45 degrees on display, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah the so dial, really, I mean, it, it would not work the same if it was a constant color through it. And this piece in, this in particular, I mean, piece. with the, the, the tourbillon bridge is basically six feet tall. It's the tallest tourbillon bridge, like, ever. And just, like, having that on, on a pedestal, so to speak, is really cool because they're, they're the other versions, the burgundy, the green, green's my personal favorite. I also love the burgundy. This um, is it. But the uh, off-white, too, which goes slightly in this direction, but it's not that effective as having the actual blue in it. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't quite have the same framing like this does. I think, uh, I think you're absolutely right with a touch of blue. It's, it's just a like, touch, yeah. It's just a little accent on the outside, but it kind of brings your eye to that mm -hmm. middle. Yep. which I think is amazing. Again, that kind of sunburst feel, just, you know, it's very light on the edge, which we're used to seeing it fade to black, mm -hmm. which is yep. really cool to see, you know, the opposite in this, in this scenario. All right, so I have a question now on, because obviously Moser's probably most famously known for colored dials mm -hmm. um, and really has become their thing and really was kind of the leading edge of it as far as I was concerned um, in the smaller manufacturers. How did that come about? I mean. Who so got up one day and question. said, you know, we have all silver dials and dials. we should go really so, I mean, you had dramatic the, dials. When the brand was taken over by the uh, Melon family in 2012, mm -hmm. if we look at all the products before that, um, which they weren't called the Endeavor, for instance, there was the Mayu as, as an example, we really had this very um, traditional um, white gold case or even right. platinum case and so on. Then you'd have a silver dial, not female, but just silver. And so... If we were back then, if you went to the stores and you actually looked at, at these kinds of um, center second watches, for instance, it was it looked very similar to all right. the others. It was I a mean, Vacheron, it was a Long, it was AP, all the same, right? so on. And they all looked very similar. And I mean, for a small brand, at that stage we were producing less than the fifteen hundred we're producing now. I mean, the brand wasn't really well known. So how do you differentiate, or why would anybody really buy a Moser, no matter, even though it was built really well, why would you actually buy that Moser? Because you have all the other ones that you just mentioned before. And so to differentiate, that, is, that was one of the differentiating points afterwards that we said, listen, we want to be a, a different brand. We don't want to be like anybody else. And then eventually we came into this color concept afterwards. Right. No, it's super effective, but I mean, it's interesting because yeah. that really is what you became known for. Yeah. And then again, you flip it over and you really appreciate what's behind it because it's not just, you know, color well, on the front, and, uh, but I mean, it's just... I was just about to say beyond that, you know, you know, cases, I know this is, uh, you know, the dial portion, but cases in general on, on Moser are extremely interesting. It, it, it really is a, another large portion of what sets it apart from the rest of the crowd is a bit further attention to detail to cases. You know, it's not just stamped out, it's not just milled, it's, it's, it's stamped, it's finished, it's, it's brought to a particular shape, it's brought to it with particular curves, and really the shape of the case does add to the dial it, on pretty much every model that we see here, honestly. Well, for me, I find what makes a Moser a Moser is really this tension between the traditional aspects. So we can see this traditional finishing of our movements. Um, I would say also the traditional finishing of most of our cases. Um, and, and then this, this uh, modern side of things. And it's this tension that if you wouldn't have this tension, if it would be too traditional, too modern, it wouldn't be that Moser anymore. Right. And I think that's why you have, with this more traditional case forms, for instance, um, to have this burst of color, you have this tension again between the, um, the tradition and something that you wouldn't have done back then. Right. I think that's awesome. And I think that's what draws you in. I mean, I think the color always drew me in. But then you start looking at the detail to it, and there's so much 
classic watch making behind it. The movements are amazing. The cases are super well. I mean, everything is there that you'd want. And you get this kind of fun pop, which does make it kind of, to your point earlier, Armin, it's like, it's like the perfect, you know, I don't think there's that many of our guys who are buying this as their first watch. Ever. Right. I think you've already got the Rolex in the paddock, and then it's like, hey, this is really cool, but it still kind of fits in the collection yeah. beautifully.